turns. It the four wheels can turn and you just go sideways into the parking space. You have to stop it manually, right? You're driving a car. You're not making sense. You pulled up a par a, a, a par aside a parking space with your four wheels in their regular direction. Well, you Next. just you just better hope that your car is positioned properly to have well, it. Well, you just did it. You you pulled alongside. Not that easy. The parking space. I had a parallel park when I came here. It wasn't easy. Did I just tell you you no longer have to parallel park? You turn the wheels, the wheels of the car, the four wheels how, how that, turn sideways. How does that assure you that your car is going to be properly parked? Because you slide into the parking space. It's not, it's not easy. It's not that easy. Because you're not thinking into what I'm just giving you. You're thinking in terms of the regular car. It's not a regular car. Well, there has to be some electronic device that knows where the curb is. Why do you... It doesn't just, you don't just slip in just like that, you know. The wheels turn, all four of them, and you just go sideways. I You're up. in the parking space. I give up. But you have to, your car has to, has to sense somehow where the curb is You're and how much space car. is be, be between you and the front car and the back car. You can't just willy-nilly just... Stop in front, in, what, are you going to stop a side of a small one? So you can't get in it? No, no. Well, then why would you do that? No, it would have to be ample room for you to get in. No it. kidding, but because, we're not talking about because that. Because if you box yourself in, guess what? The people behind you or the one in front of you might hit you. No, because you just come out oh. sideways. But they do have some kind of car <laughs> with sensors on it that is aware of the environment around it. Give me one of those cars. One of these cars? Yeah, any one. All right, I'll give you the Ford uh, Mustang. Mustang. All right, let me get this set uh, done here, folks. Folkies. Here's the parking space. See, he's right got to win the fucking argument. Here's the parking yeah. space. Right. James is coming along. Mm. He sees the parking space over here. Okay. All of these wheels turn that way, and James goes in like that. Sideways. Oh, all four wheels. Yes. Go from being vertical yes. to horizontal. Yes. yes. No, so they become perpendicular. Perp your own dick. Perpendicular to the sidewalk. Instead of being parallel to the sidewalk, they are exactly perpendicular. So your car Slide. is going straight towards the curb. That's correct. So you're aware of this of the space between. That's correct. That is correct. Okay. I like to see you driving a Stanley Steamer. I re I want a Duesenberg, not a Stanley Steamer. A yeah. Duesenberg. You got a you got a kerosene that boil the water first. I recently learned that a relative. A young woman in her 20s is involved in a polyamorous relationship. Polyamorous? You have sex with parrots? A menage a trois consisting of two women. What? That's what they call it? And one man. Ugh, polyamorous. <laughs> I understand how the 20s can be a time of sexual experimentation. Of concern to me is that the man and the woman she is involved with are married to each other. Well, uh, not on spring break. And <laughs> given that my relative is involved with a married couple, what good can come of it for her? When I asked her mother about it, her response was that her daughter will have to figure it out for herself and that she can't tell her daughter how to live. Yeah, that's probably what happened with Bristol Palin. Let her figure it out for herself. But she didn't get the information. 
She had an abstinence-only education. That's it. She didn't learn anything off the streets because there were no people of people on the streets in Alaska, just That's moose. True. Maybe she asked the moose, the male moose. And the male moose says, hey, honey, turn around. Bend over. Bend over and I'll show, I'll give you a little sex education. <laughs> Moo. <laughs> when I expressed concern about her daughter getting hurt, she reminded me that no one is exempt from experiencing hurt in relationships. Both of these statements are true. Still, as an old elder, I feel there must be something between casting about judgment and doing nothing. Sometimes one a person is fooled. Sometimes what uh, what glitters is not uh, always gold, and sometimes you are you are tricked. You know, people are good actors and actresses, and uh, you know the problem with get, uh, getting hurt, especially multiple times, is it lowers your self-esteem and. It, it, it takes the uh, the wind out of your romantic sails. I can only imagine how confusing the situation must be, as being involved with one person can be a challenge in and of itself. That's true. I have told her directly that I love her dearly. I want the best for her, and that my door is always open. Should she ever wish my support or advice on this or any other matter? Is there anything else you'd recommend, Amy Dickinson? Yeah, the daughter could say, Hey, I thought you loved me dearly. Oh, I didn't mean you. I meant the deer that come in your backyard. I love you dearly. Polly Amory has stepped out of the shadows <laughs> and is a relationship choice between being made more often. Either that or it has a new press agent. Whichever it is, that sort of group commingling, partner sharing and swapping upends our notion of what romantic attachment is supposed to be like commingling of the scum guppy with the huevo. This relationship model certainly makes us question what marriage is all about. You sound very wise. Mm, except when the legalities of it come around. We know. live in an era where expressing any opinion on someone else's behavior smacks of judgment. That's okay. A lot of people need to be bitch smacked around. And yet, why are we here? To bitch slap people around. If not to make choices and judgments. And to gently guide our younger loved ones. Gently. I understand your instinct and double down on your concern. I'll give you gently. However, my basic point of view is that consenting adults will do what consenting adults will do. Oh, and that goes for all Republicans. Yet that is very wise. And they have a right to their choices. Yeah, people will do what they do. The freakazoids will remain as freakazoids. The only problem is they, they reproduce. Unless they harm children or scare horses. Yeah, you shouldn't scare horses. Horse is a horse, of course, of course. In the case you outline, all three are mutually consenting adults. Your young relative is not, apparently, having a secret affair with one of the spouses. Rather, the married couple have invited her in the new partner, which makes her not an interloper, but a guest. An antelope. Or perhaps a temporary amusement. A fling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone is going to get hurt. Unless you have uh, two flingers, two swingers. But hurt happens in relationships. Yeah, well, that's true. 
Your harshest judgment would be reserved for the married couple, who are presum presumably older and who I assume hold the power. On the face of it, this feels exploitative, but you don't know. Your response so far has been perfect. If you are worried, say so. If you have questions, ask them with an open mind. Hold your loved one close. Offer her a soft place to fall. She's going to need it. But then we all do. A soft place to fall. Or like Keith Urban's new song, Break on me! Shatter like glass. Yeah. Well, you know... You know? You know the funny part, even if... Even if a couple agrees to keep it strictly uh, uh, physical and for fun, for amusement, uh, mm -hmm. if for some reason once... Uh, once the woman um, spreads her legs, uh, she she they sometimes get very possessive, you know. Even though they they know going into the relationship or the friendship that it's it's only for physical enjoyment, o uh, only uh, uh, hedonistic uh, pleasures, and you know. But they it's like almost like they get possessive, like you know. Oh, I had sex with you, therefore. Uh, I'm going to uh, possess you, you know, like, uh, like, th they go back on the agreement. Well, right now, they do that. It sounds like the man is in control and has the power, and he's got the two women. But what if the two women find out they like each other better, and the young man is ostracized? And not invited. Yeah, what happens then? Ah. A new dynamic. Ah, very possible. You're a smart cookie, Dr. Bill. You're a deep thinker. A fortune cookie. A fortune cookie. Is there a riddle inside or, or a prediction? Or a, a, uh, I don't deal with riddles. A, um, a prophecy. A prophecy, yes. Maybe. You know, there was a, uh, a, a video from the Catholic Church. Well, first of all, Pope Francis said uh, something strange about... Uh, uh, it almost sounded like he was saying something big is coming. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it's up on the Facebook group. You'll see it. He, almost like a prophetic statement. Mm -hmm. And then, underneath the post... Of the mm -hmm. article. Mm -hmm. There's a YouTube video about the uh, Our Lady of Fatima, Portugal. Oh, uh, yes, yes. And, 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 and what the, the children were saying, what the uh, image, apparition, whatever you want to call it, said to them. Right. It sounded very uh, pro Catholicism, pro, pro rosary. Pro devil. In other words, if you don't. Um, do penance and uh, 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 start following God, respecting God, and show respect to, to the Blessed Mother and say the rosary every day, you're going to be punished. Now, even if, if it was Vir uh, the spirit of the Virgin Mary, why would she order people, you say you better show respect to me and say the rosary every day or else. I mean, why would she say something like that? It doesn't sound right. Because if there was some sort of thing talking or whatever, it was a demon. But Mary is dead. But Will you, you get that through your head? But she's not people? a she's not a deity. She's dead. She sleeps in the grave. The dirt's the great dirt sleep. But, but 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 just just the, what the children claim was told to them doesn't sound right to me. You better do say the rosary every day and show respect for me, wouldn't Mary, the devil, or would, else. Wouldn't the devil want you to do what the devil's church says to do? Well, it's it's ob does? it's obvious that the Catholic Church, which was created by Emperor Constantine, Simon 
No. Simon Magus. Emperor Constantine came about uh, 300 years after Simon Magus. Oh, so so this so this banner is wrong. It's what banner? It, the banner that says Constantine created the Roman Catholic Church or That's Christmas. Not what the oh no, I'm sorry. It said Constantine created Christmas. The the they called a council. Right. The Council of Nicaea, I believe it was. Okay. The Pope and Constantine. They decided to take over Saturnalia and Brumalia. Okay. And make it a Christian holiday. Okay. Calling it Christmas. Okay. Okay. So the, the but the creation of Catholicism was Simon Magus. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Simon Magus was around at the same time. The true Church of God was in Jerusalem, and was the persecution of Christians uh, in the in the arena in the Colosseum? Not at that time. Not at that time. Okay. Came later. I'm just saying that they were buddies. They were two existing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simon Magus, he. He uh, was baptized, but he didn't get the Holy Spirit, and he tried to buy it from Peter, I believe. Right. Was this, he tried to buy the Holy Spirit. Buy it. Buy it. Yeah. Oh, sort of like uh, in, uh, later on, the Catholic Church uh, would offer for a fee. They would offer people indulgences, uh, indulgences, indulgences. Your a, sins. A one-way one ticket to heaven. And then you could buy other things that would help your relatives win purgatory, purgatory. You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like the ho holy spring water of Peter Popoff. Like if you if you send me money, you'll get the blessings, and you'll get, you know, you'll get the blessings. God is much more magnanimous than these people make him out to be. Yeah, he that? does not want bad people to be tortured forever. He will kill them outright. Burn them up so they never exist again. Which is the more more you know gentle way of doing things. Okay? Excuse me, my, my thermos cup went flying. Not by itself, but so is that uh, is that Simon Magus with two G's or one G? Uno G. One G. Okay, got it. Oh, okay. That's it was encouraging and refreshing to hear from Christy Whitman. Oh, good. A moderate, old-fashioned, middle-of-the-road Republican. I share her disgust for the distorted rhetoric of the far-right ideological zealots of her party, who she believes will go down to a flaming defeat in 2016. Yeah, I, I met her one time at the public library. She was giving a little speech. Uh, does she? Uh, uh, she's not too crazy about Donald Trump and her party, is she? Nine. In a recent interview, Whitman demonstrated a political, ac a political acumen that goes far beyond the ultra-conservative cacophony and sound bites of the leading Republican candidates. She's the one that tried to privatize uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles and it didn't work out. Well, it is privatized now. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. Oh, I didn't know that. Whitman has consistently, so is the lottery. Maybe that's why my car zips right through when I go for inspection. <laughs> and, and there's no, like, long lines. And <laughs> Whitman has consistently shown a wise and common sense approach to domestic issues like the Affordable Care Act, as well as gun control, and the need for campaign finance reform. On the international level, and as the former director of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, 
and in direct opposition to conservative Republicans, Whitman has been a leading voice to increase an awareness of the degradation of the planet and its impact on global warming. I never heard her speak on, on environmental issues. And because she lied. She lied. That all the shit coming out of the, the pile down there on 911 was safe. Well, it didn't turn out that way, did it? Did she say the There's same? people dying Did she from cancers and the the the, the, the drug, Dragoga, what is it, the Zadroga Act or something that they just finally allowed to go through to pay the bills for those people, the first responders. She lied. She probably goes easy on fossil fuel um, emissions. Whitman has demonstrated the courage and insight in criticizing the Republican candidates, including Governor Christie, as being mired in the tar pit of hypocrisy. That sounds like him. And incapable of seeing beyond their ideological myopic views. As Whitman is disgusted by the new Republicans, so too should all Americans be disgusted by their arrogant and vitriolic gospel of hatred and prejudice. Christy Whitman, in my opinion, was one of the worst governors in recent New Jersey history. Rivaling only Jim McGreevy. Jim McGreevy was, was a bad governor? She is entitled to her opinion, but she behaves like a flaming liberal with the stances that she articulates. Flaming liberal? I wonder what he thinks about Bernie Sanders, if she's a flaming liberal. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. Who is it? Mention his motherfucker's name at the end. Obviously, only the record would make her the headliner on the front page as it serves the cause of bad-mouthing Governor Christie. Oh, but it's okay for a balloon boy to bad-mouth other people? The legacy of Whitman on a host of issues is not a very laudable one. That's the, re the lesson your leadership, readership should take away. Mr. Peter Lyman of Glenrock. Peter, Peter Lyman, you douchebag idiot. Uh, 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 since when does a Republican present any factual proof to support any of their ideology? None. So what does a judge expect to see in any court case? Evidence. He asks to see to look at evidence, no matter what type of court it is. If you don't have any evidence, then you don't have a leg to stand on in court. Well, get out of my court, friend. Isn't it the same? Hey, this will make a very good gavel, by the way. You shall call me your magistrate. No, I mean, this guy is talking so highly of uh, Chris Christie, but no Republican has any solid proof to back them up. They just bully their way through. They try to, they cut you off. They try to drown you out. And uh, they're, they're political bullies. And uh, they just have these wacky ideas off the top of their head that they can never prove. Former Governor Christy Whitman has a lot of nerve criticizing the Republican candidates for president. The clown bus? When she ran for governor, she promised to cut taxes 10% a year. When she got into office, she realized that the only way she could do that was to borrow 
three billion dollars from the pension system I have a better idea tax the rich lower the taxes on the middle class tax the rich you don't have to borrow money See and it? well who do you think was going to get these tax cuts the rich yeah well you see all these tea baggers are a lot of them are usually like uh, middle class people that are being strangled by our current system yes and tax it, taxation they and they're blaming they do not understand the 50 percent 57 percent of the budget and the one percent they don't get it and they're bl and they're believing the wrong people they're, That's they're believing the lies because democrats are liars baby killers secular humanists and all the other uh, right. you know and negative the, terms you want to and and throw the, at and the immigrant of color is to blame and the blacks are to blame and the and the the homeless are to blame and the poor is always to blame because they continue to believe the propaganda coming from the right wing so that and so instead of instead of seeing the reality that the biggest moochers of all time are the republicans and the top one percent the corporate oligarch are the biggest moochers okay instead of seeing the reality they they continue to believe the lies the whole world is deceived revelations anyway if you're going to borrow the three billion from the pension system and stop making yearly payments into the system unfortunately for us she never paid back the three billion what about all the money tax money Christie confiscated yeah what about the homestead rebate money that used to go to the elderly and the disabled that became no more yeah yeah and the hurricane sandy victims which still aren't paid which are not paid yet we're stronger than the storm the commercial you know Whitman is one of those responsible for our present financial crises regarding the pension system. She has a lot of nerve to criticize anyone. Yeah. Well, when New Jersey was in the red, before Chris Christie... In the black. In the black. Well, Chris Christie says he, he, he inherited a, a state that was deeply in the red. We were in the black. I never knew that it was in the red under Cody. Governor Cody. Okay. Seems to me he held everything in check. Everything was nice under how, Cody. How was uh, Florio? Florio, they say, was a tax and spend. Okay. Yeah, my, my uncle got on the phone with me um, to say Merry Christmas and he, he told me that Martin, was it Martin O'Malley, his first name is Martin? Mr. Martin O'Malley of Maryland had a, had a toilet bowl tax where you, you had to pay taxes every time you flushed the toilet. How do you monitor that? Impossible. Tax and spend Democrat Martin O'Malley. He's just making it up. My uncle's Republican. How do you monitor toilet flushing? He made it up. He made it up, that's all. It's like... Uh, it's that, the stuff that these redneckers believe. That's like um, uh, Christine O'Donnell saying that she wants to make masturbation illegal. Another Republican. Uh, how do you monitor when people jerk off? I mean, it's preposterous. Toilet tax? You're, you're flushing goes on the same water bill that the homeowner pays. How do you distinguish how often the toilet bowl gets flushed? Made up. Made up. And he said it so seriously, too. So does that make it true? Jeez. I don't know, man. I breathed a great sigh of relief knowing that there are some Republicans out there who are wise, unafraid to challenge the prevailing trend of bully politics, 
and competent enough to name the underlying and destructive motivations that propel this particular presidential race. May she find a large and sympathetic audience. Oh, so Donald Trump and Chris Christie are not bully, political bullies in his eyes? But hey, Christie James, Whitman is? Are you sleeping or what? That letter said the opposite. The letter said the Republicans are... Oh, the letter said that... The letter said she's that... She's wise and intelligent. And she's calling out the Republicans. Oh, this is Christy Whitman. Correct. Saying that. That other Lyman guy, I got him confused. Well, stop getting him. He's done. He's finished. He's done. Okay. We're doing Christy Whitman here. Okay. Now, one more letter. All right. Wow. Former Governor Christy Whitman believes the best thing for Republicans is to go down to flaming defeat. Whitman also compared Donald Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. Whitman should admit she is not a Republican, but rather a proven tax and spend liberal. It's almost like you're you're quoting Christy Whitman and you're quoting someone else attacking Christy Whitman at the same time. And then you and then you get mad at me for misconstruing this reading? These are letters about Christy Whitman. These have nothing to do with Christy Whitman as a speaker. So this is a letter by another individual. There were six letters thus far. Uh, okay, well, yeah, just get it over with because I gotta, you know, Damn. I gotta run. Whitman should admit she is not a Republican, but a tax and spend liberal. I supported Whitman in 1993 as she campaigned to roll back the sales tax, <clears throat> reduce spending, and cut onerous regulations. Yeah. Instead, Whitman increased spending, added hundreds of new fees, raided every trust fund, and bonded New Jersey taxpayers into the next several decades. Yeah, and she promised to lower property taxes. In 1995, Whitman added an extra $11.50 fee on our vehicle registration for tougher emissions testing. The fee generated $107 million. But most of the money went to the general fund instead of the emissions program. Just skimming off the top, man. Just skimming off the top. Whitman also raided the Transportation Trust Fund by refinancing the fund, creating an additional $700 million in interest to be paid by taxpayers. Much of Whitman's bonding was later ruled unconstitutional by the New Jersey Supreme Court. Whitman abandoned her stinking ship and left her second term a year early. Whitman, George W. Bush, and the long list of so-called rhinos Republicans in name only, who have disappointed us, should be honest and join the liberal gang. We finally have a leader, we hope, who is not politically correct, who is exposing the failures of the liberal agenda and receiving the support of the public. That's it. And who is this? Donald J. Trump! So this this person is, is a Trump man. The person is uh, a numbs a total numbskull. Alright, thank you, uh, oh my god. Thank you, numbskulls. Thank you, numbskulls and imbeciles. <laughs> for getting way too much media time, FaceTime. Uh, th uh, thank you for joining us for this holiday special uh progressive discussions uh pre new year's eve 2016 mm. have a safe and and fun but most of all safe new year's eve this is a very important year as you well know
coming up. So uh, use your head. Besides, stay besides alive. A, we need every Democratic vote. Besides a hat, a hat rack. For, you know, use your head. Think. We need every vote from the middle class and poor to make it a priority to definitely get out and vote. It's extremely important and uh, we need to replace many Republicans everywhere with Democrats. I wish there was a third party but there's not. I'm not really thrilled about the two-party system but um, we stand to gain a lot more from a Democratic controlled Washington than a Republican controlled Washington and hopefully you too will feel the burn. Bernie! 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 USA! USA! Bernie! USA! USA! Bernie! USA, Bernie. Damn right. Damn right. Now, uh... So, um... No, now, I mean, first, Vladimir Putin was like a hero, uh, bombing the crap out of uh, the terrorists and ISIS and everybody, and now he's like, uh... Uh, he's not Mr. Nice Guy uh, that everybody thinks he is, you know. You know, he, he praised Donald Trump. He praised Donald Trump. He, he kills journal, journalists that disagree with him. I mean, is, isn't there any nice guy out there running any country in the world? Well, Kasparov tried to beat him. Didn't work out. No. The ex-world chess champion, Kasparov, right. yeah. tried to beat Putin in the election, he right. lost. He lost. So what does that tell you? Yeah. Either the election was rigged or people voted for yeah. Putin. Of course, I'm a little surprised that Putin likes Trump. Unless he just likes his, his uh, courage and his outspokenness and that's it. I don't know. They're fascists. You told me Assad was, wasn't a Mr. Nice Guy uh, Either. He's a dictator. Right, except when he's interviewed, he's all clean cut in a suit and tie and he talks softly. Well, hey, Hitler was in his nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, uniform. You know. I'm so sure Mussolini didn't appear in uh, his underwear. He speaks, uh, he speaks softly, you know? Assad. He, you know, he's, he, he seemed like a gentleman, but you, you know, others say he's a dictator. So I don't know. You know what? The, 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 there's so it's there's such an inherent wickedness in human nature. It, it's in, uh, incredible. Oh, gee whiz! I believe it's called human nature. You know, people start off with good intentions and then they get corrupted. Anyway, we'll see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What is yeah? All Lang Syne. Uh, what the hell does that mean? I I ask that every year. All Lang Syne. Look it up under Google. I don't even know how to fucking spell it. I don't either.